This week I challenged all of you to a thought experiment, and if you want to watch the video, I'll put it right here. But the basic gist of it is, if a witch cursed humanity and took away everything humans have ever made, how long would it take for us to make the iPhone again? Well, the results are in, and from the look of things, it's going to be a while. Now before I get into the responses, there are a few things I should clarify really quick. Mainly I had a lot of people asking if all the human things that get taken away include things like language and knowledge and that kind of thing. And I think for the purpose of this thought experiment that it's only physical things, not exactly the knowledge. I think that's what makes it more fun is could we recreate everything with the knowledge we currently have? Now, in the original Wait But Why post, he actually gets really specific on exactly what type of phone it winds up being. It's the, it's the iPhone 6S. And he says that if the witch went into an Apple store with the phone, would the people working there be able to tell a difference between the original one and this rebuilt one? I didn't go quite that into it, but on the original article, he went that specific. And also, it's been pointed out by a few people that Joe Rogan talked about this uh, somewhere along the line. And I don't know if Wait But Why got that from Joe Rogan or the other way around, but... This is obviously something that's very fascinating to a lot of people, so Joe Rogan talked about it, so I'll just make sure you guys know that he did that too. Okay, so here's what you guys had to say. The answers mostly break down into three categories, positive, negative, and fatalistic. I categorize positive answers as people who thought that it would take less than 300 years, and then negative answers as people who thought it would take more than 300 years, and fatalistic people are people who don't think it's ever gonna happen again. And as it turns out, you guys are pretty positive. We had 15 positive answers, 12 negative answers, and eight of you said, no way, Jose, this is never happening again, mostly stating that the human race is not adapted to living this wild anymore and the civilization would crumble beyond repair. For the fatalists, many people argued that over time, people would forget that the iPhone ever existed and that the whole idea of a witch and a curse and the iPhone and everything, and even the technology itself would become sort of a, a fairy tale that you know, most people wouldn't believe. It would be like an ancient myth. And some argued that we might eventually be stymied by something like another ice age or something like that, or just simply not being able to sustain the population and you know the, the world without any kind of human infrastructure involved would just completely wipe us out and we would eventually go extinct. As for the negative answers, they ranged everywhere from as long as it took till now to about 300 years ago. So Greg Featherson, Jonathan Waddell, and Elizabeth Undurgen all said that it would take as long as it did this, the first time around. Jimmy McKierney, Jimmy McInerney said 10,000 years. Adam AFA, The Course Cola, and Luke Sooks. Oh my god, I can't say you guys' names. <laughs> this is terrible. Adam AFA, The Course Cola, and Luke Sasaki all said thousands of years, which means a lot of different things, but I'm going to put it right in this area. Cassis Voltus said 3,000 to 20,000 years. Lapaca said 1,000 to 10,000 years. Darth Id said 1,000 years. Lucas Reynolds said 500 years. And Zebra Boy Gaming said 500 years. And of course, a lot of the negative people were commenting about how difficult it would be to communicate across other languages and to even just how much effort it would take just to get a boat to travel, to get the, the, the materials together. And, and how, you know, a lot of people went into specifics on, well, first you would have to be able to, you know, mine the metals and stuff that you would need to make it with. And then you'd have to be able to create electricity. And, and a lot of people like got really detailed in how things would have to go and how long it would take for those things to happen. So kudos to you guys for getting really granular. That was really cool. And now for all the optimists out there, I am Bill Lil Blibly said 80 to 300 years. Diff 100 said 75 years. And he talked a lot about the industrial revolution and the fact that it took about 150 years or so for us to get from the industrial revolution to here. So he thought it would take about the same amount of time. Decent argument. A guy with a name called something said 20 to 100 years. Lee Porter really cracked me up because he said 40, and then he came back and said, no, 200. And then he said, geez, I don't know, which is the appropriate answer, I think. Pansu Man said 20 to 60 years. Mark Kim said 15 to 20 years. Sam said 10 years. Joel South said several and so did DJ Gaming. Ryan Bietti said six years. Shaitan the Unborn said four to five years. Brian Aguilera said two to five years. Angus H1 said about a year. Bram Heeson said six months to a year. And Carl Sultana, the optimist to end all optimists, said one month. A month. If I'm ever in an airplane that's crashing, I want to be sitting next to you. No, we're totally pulling out of this. 
I mean, it takes a full year for them to come up with a new iPhone model now with all the technology we have, but anyway. All right, so you may be wondering, what is my guess? Well, it turns out I'm a bit of a pessimist myself. I think if it's possible at all, it's gonna take probably about as long as it took this time, maybe a little bit less depending on a few things. Because to me, the number one thing that you've gotta think about is the fact that, honestly, I think 80 or 90% of the population would die within about six months. I mean, for one thing, just think about all the people who live in multiple story houses or apartments, people who live in high rises, they would wake up literally falling to their death and they'd be the lucky ones. A lot of people talked in there about how we just don't have the skills to survive in the wild anymore, and, and that's true, but more so than that even, we are a planet full of seven billion people, and if everything that we had created goes away, that means all of our agriculture, all of our domestic livestock, there just wouldn't be enough food for people, just straight up not enough food. Now, yeah, back in the day, we lived as hunter-gatherers and we were able to survive, but I mean, even the largest tribes back then only had maybe a few hundred people in it. Now suddenly you have like three million people in Los Angeles, or where Los Angeles used to be, and nothing to eat. I would say the absolute best case scenario would be that people were able to rally around, say, the Apple employees and write down as much as they possibly can. Of course, they would have to create paper first, but let's just assume that they were quick enough to be able to create paper and really document what is in the iPhone and how it works and all the little, like, they would have to bring all these people together. They would have to coordinate to somehow feed all the Apple employees and like basically everybody would have to rally around this this one small group of people. But as many of the commenters pointed out, in such a situation, it's it's really hard to ask somebody to rally around a big goal when you have no food. When people are starving and their families are starving, violence is gonna break out, things are gonna get really, really, really bad. But if, and it's a huge if, we are able to get everything documented and maintain those documents, then over time, I think, maybe we would be able to recreate it in about a thousand years or so. But I also think that the argument that after a generation or two, the whole thing is gonna just seem like a big, huge myth. People aren't gonna even be able to believe that something like that ever existed. So to get people to work together and continue trying to build toward that would be next to impossible. But as you all found out in your uh, answers, and it's funny because I would look at some of the comments and I could see you guys working it out as you were writing the comment and just like going further and further and deeper into it and being like, oh my God, this is insane. But the thing that makes it fascinating, to me anyway, and the thing that I, I think makes the whole thought experiment worth having is it really highlights how much our lives and our lifestyles and the world that we live in today is based on the thousands of years of progress that came before us. You know, we've all heard that phrase that we're able to see as far as we can because we're standing on the shoulders of giants, but it's not just giants. It's, it's even the little people who paved the roads and who, you know, invented the wheels and, and did all the little tiny, tiny steps and incremental movements over thousands of years that got us to where we are right now. And it was only because of those tiny incremental movements that the next step was able to take place, and the next step, and the next step to get us where we are right now. And it's gonna continue that way in the future. Now, if you guys really enjoyed this thought experiment, uh, I highly recommend, and I've talked about this book before, but I highly recommend getting this book. It's called What If? It's by Randall Monroe from XKCD. I never can get that right. But this is this the most awesome book in the world. It is literally a book filled with hypothetical scenarios like that. Like this. If every person in the world aimed a laser pointer at the moon at the same time, would it change color? This one was awesome. What would happen if you made a periodic table out of cube-shaped bricks where each brick was made of the corresponding element? Hint, it would not go well. If every human somehow simply disappeared from the face of the earth, how long would it be before the last artificial light source would go out? That was a fun one. And hint on that one, it wouldn't actually be on earth. Is it possible to build a jetpack using downward firing machine guns? Oh, this one, was, this one was great. From what height would you need to drop a steak for it to be cooked when it hit the ground? 
Anyway, I am putting a link for this down below. Seriously, if you guys enjoyed this thought experiment, you're just gonna geek out over this one. I read the whole thing in like a week and I don't read very fast. And last but not least, um, I didn't talk about this in the first video simply because I didn't think about it until after I shot it, but I thought this would be a really cool experiment to do. So I thought I'm gonna find a comment that just really stands out to me, something that was really interesting. And I'm going to give this book a giveaway to the best comment. And I found the best comment, and here it is. The number one comment goes to Luke Sasaki for this one reason, because he made a point that I thought was really interesting and I hadn't thought about, even though I've had this idea or this, this thought experiment in my mind for about a year now. And the point that he made was that after a while, breaking the curse would be a curse in and of itself. Because if we broke the curse and everything that we have now came back into existence, the people in that time would be so far removed from having all that that it would throw the entire world into chaos. Like having all of that back would be a disastrous nightmare for those people. And that's something I had never thought about. So Luke, congratulations. Uh, I will reach out to you or you can reach out to me on Twitter. I will send you this book. Uh, congratulations on a great comment that really blew my mind. I hadn't thought about that. All right, so I really had a lot of fun doing this. You guys, thank you so much for your great ideas and for keeping everything civil. We had a few little dust ups in the comments, but um, that's why I love you guys. We don't have a lot of drama. Um, it just a lot of back and forth and fun conversations. I don't get a chance to really get into the comments that much because I just have a lot going on, but I really was just like, every single time a new comment came in, I was going in and checking it out. So uh, you guys, thanks so much for, for being a part of this. I will be back with more regular videos in the future and uh, some cool stuff coming around. And you guys go out and have a great week. Love you guys. Take care.